Today's podcast is brought to you by Quantrix Modeler Introductory Training, teaching the fundamental foundation that you need to become a Quantrix Master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Show me, show me, show me how you do Quantrix. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 234, Multidimensional Modeling Power Part 2. This is actually in response to a question I received on YouTube on episode number 204, where I showed you some awesome functionality of Quantrix, where I had two or three different matrices and I was able to link them all together and perform a calculation. It's actually pretty sweet. It uh, really demonstrates the power of Quantrix Modeler. But on that video, I just recently had uh, Jack, Jack Old Tub ask me, what happens if your main timeline has summary items? Value at doesn't properly skip summary items on timelines with multiple cloud categories. I'm curious how you get around that problem. That's a great question, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I do recommend uh, that you go out and you do watch episode 205 again and kind of get a refresher on what I was doing there. I'll explain it briefly here, uh, but again, it may be of benefit for you to go out and watch it. So I have here a matrix, or I have a couple matrices here. I have a list of activities going down the side, and then I have some timeline going across the top. Those activities are also linked to another matrix called the activities assumption matrix. Within that matrix, I have a start date for the uh, values that I want to apply, and then kind of this curve ID of what curve I want to apply uh, to each one of these activities and uh, the curve values that are going to be applied by monthly intervals based off of the start date are found here in this curve master. So let's take for example activity B. I said that it is going to start in February as far as the design architect to planning only. It's going to start in February and we are going to use the S-curve code of 10. So if I were to go out here to 10 I would expect to see 3.5, 4.5 uh, 9.0, 12.0, and that is what I'm seeing across uh, 10 months. If I were to go ahead and change this to say uh, 15 months, I would then expect to see uh, the curve of 15 months being applied. So I'm going to finish up with a 7.5, 6.3, which is 6.25, 5, and 4. So you can see that it is very uh, flexible in what I'm able to put in here. And what the question is, is, well, what happens if in my timeline matrix up here, I actually have a summary item? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a summary item. And when I do that, my S curve is now all sorts of uh, crazy. It's whacked. And the reason why is really because I'm taking a summary of some of my helpers as far as the month position, the month start and the active position goes. So to get this to work when I have a summary item within timeline, it's pretty basic what I need to do and that is I simply need to skip my helpers on my summary items that have been added. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to say skip month start. I'll go to the next row and say active position. And when I do that, it, it kind of cleans that up a little bit. Also, I need to go up here to month start and I need to skip it. Or I need to skip the sum of month. And you may say, well, I don't want to see uh, duplicates on 11 here. So again, if I wanted to go into here to active position and I say skip sum of month here as well, I can do that and it should clean it up. Uh, just fine and dandy for me and again I don't like this 58 here so I'm going to just skip uh, here as well I'm going to skip S curve. So all I'm really doing in order to get the value at function to work for me is to simply uh, perform a bunch of skips and I guess also S curve is also here so you can see the the beauty of summary items and I say that a little bit uh, sarcastically, sometimes they can kind of be a pain if you're doing it after the fact, which I'm demonstrating here that it is a pain because you have to insert skips everywhere. But at the same time, that is how you would do it. Uh, I'm still maintaining my value at like I showed you in episode number 205. I now have summary items. I simply have had to uh, get there by uh, 
uh, inserting skips in the appropriate formulas and bam it gives you uh, what is needed in order to kind of do this multi-dimensional analysis that Quantrix is really uh, fantastic. And if you have any questions about any video, I do hope that you'll ask me that question in the YouTube comments. I do monitor those and I will uh, do my best to provide you an answer. And if you have a brand new question about uh, Quantrix that I haven't answered here on a video, please reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix. I do want to make you a Quantrix master. Also, I would encourage you to go to QuantrixAuthority.com and check out the training I have there. And please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez.